Now he's dispatched of him in emphatic fashion. Certain people, obviously, know the last Well, it's what he's supposed to do. It's what Tyson Fury should have done. I mean. Anthony Joshua's manager, Eddie Hearn, poked fun at Tyson Fury for not stopping the Predator in their fight last year, and British boxer Paul Smith agreed, saying Fury should have stopped Nanu after Joshua's decisive knockout win over Francis Ngannou. Um, probably what should have happened in, in the Fury fight, maybe, but... Again, not trying to be a smart ass this time because I was completely wrong last time and I said Fiore would have it easy, but that's how it probably should have went last time and that's how everyone would have probably expected this fight. If the two fight right now, Eddie Hearn thinks AJ has a good chance of defeating Tyson Fury as well. What he said regarding this battle is as follows. If you put a poll out right now, who wins Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua? I reckon it'd be 50-50 or even 60-40 to AJ. During Tyson Fury's most recent interview, Eddie Hearn totally went after him. The Gypsy King, who previously mentioned battling Anthony Joshua, would undoubtedly get enraged by this, but will this battle really take place this year? Stay tuned and observe as we uncover the truth in this video. Promoter Eddie Hearn has never been afraid to voice his thoughts in the boxing world, particularly on the boxers he represents. Before the fight even started, Hearn was worried about Anthony Joshua's fight with Francis Ngannou however, when Joshua surprised everyone by defeating Nanu in only two rounds, Hearn's joy knew no limits. Hearn praised his boxer profusely, deeming him the finest in the heavyweight class. But he didn't stop there. In the post-fight interview, after AJ was knocked out in Ngannou and overjoyed, he also made fun of Gypsy King Tyson Fury, who may possibly be AJ's next opponent. Eddie Hearn expressed his feelings. Hearn said that Joshua's performance was among the best he had ever seen in the boxing world, expressing his amazement and happiness with it. Hearn said that the knockout demonstrated Joshua's dominance over all other fighters in the division and beyond, making it more than simply a victory. When talking about how Joshua won, Hearn couldn't contain his enthusiasm. That was one of the most unbelievable performances I've seen, he said. He said, highlighting the knockout's influence on social media and international news sources in addition to the local community. The promoter declared Anthony Joshua to be the world's most dangerous guy, demonstrating his satisfaction in Joshua's accomplishment. Eddie Hearn saw this comment as a proclamation of Joshua's dominance in the heavyweight class as much as the win itself. Not only is Anthony Joshua back, but he's back with a vengeance and all the skills he needs to rule the heavyweight class. Hearn lauded Joshua's all-around skill set, which includes power, defense, and footwork, and he gave credit to his training squad for his achievement. It was evident that the promoter thought Joshua had what it took to become the unchallenged heavyweight world champion, calling on the other fighters in the division to recognize his talent. Hearn's remarks also hinted to potential fights in the road, namely one against Tyson Fury. With confidence, he said that one should not discount Joshua's recent results, especially against opponents like Nanu, who had previously caused Fury problems. Hearn boldly drew a connection, pointing out that while Fury battled Naganu, Joshua was able to brutally knock him out. Hearn believes that this sets a very clear standard for Joshua's ability in relation to his competitors. The goal of the interview was to set a challenge for the future rather than just to celebrate a win. Hearn made a clear jab at Tyson Fury in order to get the much-needed bout that the public has been demanding. He thinks that Fury's win against Yus would pave the way for what may turn out to be the greatest boxing match ever between Fury and Joshua. Henry was adamant about Joshua's dominance and even said that Fury wouldn't be able to stand up to Joshua's might. Hearn restated his remarks from his most recent interview, but he ended up criticizing the Gypsy King more than once this time. Now he's dispatched of him in emphatic fashion. Certain people, obviously, know the last Well, it's what he's supposed to do. It's what Tyson Fury should have done. I mean, yes. Hearn cited Joshua's performance against Nanu along with those of AJ and Fury as evidence that he is a top fighter in the division, his criticism of Fury's performance in light of Joshua's win over Nanu is more than just promotional fluff, it's a planned attempt to highlight Joshua's easy victory over Naganu and elevate Joshua to the pinnacle of heavyweight boxing. Hearn compares Fury's battle with the same opponent to Joshua's strength and boxing acumen. This story has two purposes. It strengthens Joshua's competitive advantage and marketability while quietly undercutting Fury's heavyweight title claim. When he understands the game plan, he's devastating, but all the things he's built along the way, the footwork, the defense, and now with a Venom back, the sharpness, the punch power, 
fucking all-round heavyweight, all-round great. Hearn makes a strong and clear claim when he says that Joshua is the greatest heavyweight fighter in the world. Joshua has declared himself ready to overcome Alexander USC in a prospective rematch acclaim supported by his record and recent performances that are intended to reverberate beyond the echo chambers of boxing forums and into the ears of challengers and fans alike. Harn is challenging the whole heavyweight class in addition to showing faith in his fighter. This declaration shows how far Joshua has come as a boxer and implies that his setbacks have just served as stepping stones. Hearn's story does more than only highlight Joshua's achievements, it also challenges other heavyweights, especially Tyson Fury, in the realm of boxing, where fights are decided as much by fan desire as by manipulative promoters. Hearn's remarks are a clarion cry for the battle his supporters long for. For example, the Joshua Fury showdown is more than simply a fight for dominance inside the ring. It's a plot that has been simmering for years, ready to be ignited. Henry's position has consequences that go beyond the immediate games. In a sport where the story outside the ring defines legacy just as much as victory inside, it pushes rivals to up their game, increases the heavyweight division's commercial appeal, and sets the setting for historic bouts. Now, Henry's open endorsement of Joshua elevates the division as a whole. The current WBC champion, Tyson Fury is notorious for his outspoken nature and often erratic answers to criticism. He has not yet responded to Henry's most recent criticism of the Gypsy King, but Fury's remarks are unlikely to sit well with him. Hearn's remarks after the fight that Anthony Joshua was the finest heavyweight in the world drew criticism from Fury. In a BBC interview, Fury refuted Henry's assertion, praising Joshua's accomplishment, but stressing the importance of unique fighting styles in identifying the genuine heavyweight king. Congrats to Joshua, Fury said, but hold on, we all know Styles fights, and Eddie is yelling that he's the finest heavyweight in the world. We know he's not, he's already been defeated twice by USK, and I have to take care of that issue on his behalf. If he's still accessible after I've finished that twice, we'll play Donkey Kong. He's already been beat by Usyk twice, and I've got to deal with that yeah, pedal for him. So after I've done that twice, and if he's still available, we'll get it on. Get it on like Donkey Kong. The enticing the boxing world has long been enthralled with the idea of Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury facing off at heavyweight. A match that serves as both a story and the culmination of athletic competition, an exciting occasion full of competitiveness, pride in the country, and the pursuit of unchallenged dominance, the excitement surrounding this possible fight has been rekindled by Eddie Hearn's recent forceful remarks, which draw attention to the stark differences between Fury's unpredictable skill and Joshua's methodical dominance. However, there are many obstacles in the way of making this dream fight a reality. A conflict of this size requires careful planning, with logistical considerations and financial risks being just as important as the competitors. Just a few of the challenges include being prepared for face-off, settling on a purse split, finding a location that fits the event's grandeur, and coordinating broadcast rights. Both fighters draw large crowds and high compensation, so deals must please promoters, managers, and broadcasters, as well as all other stakeholders. Scheduling is yet another formidable obstacle. With scheduled bouts, Joshua and Fury both have busy lives personal commitments and training schedules, athletes may prepare adequately and maximize worldwide audience by finding a common ground that coincides with the athletic schedule. Time requires careful balance. The schedule must also take into account the whole boxing scene, avoiding conflicts with other significant events that can reduce attendance and income. Finally, AJ and the Gypsy King's bout won't happen until Fury prevails in his next match against Alexander Yust. The anticipation and aspirations of fans worldwide, in addition to the fighter camps, drive the building to a Joshua Fury clash. The public's pressure makes the discussions more urgent since every delay and setback is being watched by a curious public that is demanding a clear solution to the issue of who the real heavyweight champion of the world is. Both boxers want to make a lasting impression on boxing history, and their legacies are on the line. I believe, if you put a poll out right now, who wins Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua? I reckon it'd be 50-50 or even 60-40 to AJ. Eddie Hen's candid criticism of Tyson Fury and resolute backing of Anthony Joshua have sparked new conversations over the heavyweight division's hierarchy. Hen's remarks may be seen as promotional exaggeration, 
but they also capture the spirit of competition that makes boxing what it is. The boxing world is still waiting to see whether Henan's remarks will result in one of the most eagerly awaited bouts in recent memory and whether or not Fury and Joshua will eventually go into the ring as the saga progresses. There's no denying that their competition is more fierce than ever. But what are your thoughts? By year's end, will we see a brawl between these two? Tell us in the comments below. All of that for now. Remember to subscribe to and like the channel. To ensure that you never miss any more videos like this, turn on the bell for the most recent alerts. We appreciate your time and we'll see you in the future video.